let me then move on to the third chapter there accounting for categories in the data it happens very often and that's what we just did i in the previous micro exercise i first asked you to compute the mean fare per passenger class and now i just asked you to do the same thing with three histograms okay and we have done so in very very valid ways with three different calls but it's also an operation that is so common that we need to have better way of doing this so first when it comes to just number computation manipulations we can use the data frame group by method okay so group by will well do what its name entails. it will group your data by the different categories that are in a column that you give as argument so here df.groupby sex returns an object which is a, a data frame group by object it's quite custom style of object but uh, can you when you where you can then interact interact with it almost like if it was a data frame it's just that any operation will be then replicated for each level of the column that you have grouped by so that's why there if i create this group by sex and then i can ask for column age and the median of it i will get not one median but one per sex all right and now i need another example to see uh, to show a little bit how we can do this sort of stuff how we can play around with that so for this i use a little table that contains the uh, 1880 uh, Swiss census, okay? And I can, for example, it is a big table with like all the communes and all the little towns that existed in Swiss back then and plenty of numbers for each of these. And by grouping by canton name, I can then ask the Catholic, so that's the number of Catholic people per commune. And when I ask for the sum total number of Catholic, normally I would get just the total number of Catholic in Swiss at the time. But when I've grouped by canton name, I have this per canton. All right. So far, so good. I think okay so far. Yes. Okay. And then it kind of, you know, all of that kind of works. Uh, in the way that you kind of would want to, in the sense that here you see I can ask for the median, I can switch that for the mean as easily, or for the standard deviation as easily. It's It works exactly like what we had before, right? Now I want to show you a trick that it took me a little bit of time to discover that trick, and I had to do that quite a number of times by hand, but then I discovered it and made my life much, much, much easier. As once you have done this group by, sometimes what you want is not just to compute a number, but then you would like to grab the data for each group, maybe for later on doing some testing. Like let's say you want to do some sort of ANOVA, then that means that you need to have maybe the list of, you know, specific list of all these numbers for all of these canton or for all of these categories that you want. And so for that, we use the function AGG for aggregation. And we say that we want to aggregate to something such as for example a list so when you do that see what you get there is then a it's a, actually a series and each element in this series are named by here the canton that is of interest to you or the name of the category and it then gives you the each element are a list of all of the values that are of interest to you okay and then it's very easy to then just grab them okay rather than having to do rather than having to manually do like a lot of um, of of masks, because if you have to do one mask per canton, it will take to you forever, right? There, it's kind of automated for you in one single simple call, right? Just to show you the sort of way that it can like then be taken and used in practice, uh, I here briefly see, show to you how I would do an ANOVA of uh, on the on the sorry on the different uh, number of Catholics per canton and then I would take my idea census group by canton name grab the Catholic aggregate them to a list so I get something like this and then I feed that to the function 
F one way is because an ANOVA is an F statistics and it's a one way ANOVA from SciPy stats module. And then I just feed this whole object there. And this little star there is a Python way of just saying like, give the first element of this container as first argument, the second, a second argument, third, a third argument. So it basically gives all of these to the function as different arguments. And that will make my ANOVA as once, at once. And I just, you know, here in two little lines, make my little ANOVA as I wanted to do that. So it's really quite a useful, I would say it's not like fundamental to know it. It's more like a trick but it's quite a useful trick when you start to do a lot of data analysis with Python. All right, that's mostly what I wanted to show to you. And then another little thing is that once you have this little structure there, it comes to you as a series. So it's a Panda structure. And sometimes it can be nice to have it as a dictionary where the key are the canton names and the value are these lists such that then also you can easily refer to one or the other, exclude a few and so on. And so each time you are playing with a data frame, you can always call this to dict a uh, data frame or a series, sorry. You can always call this to dict method, okay, which will then transform the series into a dictionary where the index are keys and the values are the value in the series. All right. So then by doing that, yes, you see, I chained one more stuff at the end, which is a two dict. No, I have a dictionary where keys is Argao and then all the values, all the number of Catholic, uh, of Catholic per commune in Argao, and then scroll, and then I have another one, and then another one, and so on and so forth. All right. So all of these basic type are sort of interconnected, and it's possible to go from one to the other in a few calls. Sometimes, of course, you need to maybe experiment a little or go back to the documentation to check exactly how it works, but it's quite, quite, quite convenient to play around. Okay. So let me then clear the feedback. Yeah. So that's about the group by. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, do I want to do this micro exercise? Uh, let me check just briefly. Um, yeah, so let's do this micro exercise. So this is basically a little application of the group by that we've done together. Just be sure to actually uh, use this function that has already been uh, copied there and apply it to compute the age category uh, for all uh, for, for all ages, for all elements in the data frame, and then do a group by these new categories to compute your something. Yes. So let's try and solve this together. The first task was to try and create this new column, all right, which was age category. And then I gave to you this function there, and we want to then apply the age to it. And so that gives us some categories. We want to then push that to a new column. So then DFC, and then we will call that, I don't know, hcat, and then an equal, and then I can just check this with a little head. And then I got there. And then you see here, I have this hcat column, and then it depends on the age. When the age is above 17, uh, we have adults, and then depending on this little threshold there, it will be teenager, child, and so on and so forth. So far, so good. Yes, a few people. Yeah, I know it's getting to be a bit later on in the day, but let's make the most of the time we have. So. Once we have that, then we do our group by. So dfc dot group by. Okay, we group by hcat. Okay, and then we are interested in column uh, compute survival rate, rate by gender, age category, and passenger class. So we want the survival rate. So we group by age category. Okay. And we want the survival. So that's survived then. 
okay? And then we want the survival rate. Because survive is true or false, okay? If we want the mean of that, then we get a survival rate, okay? On average, how many survived? Um, so then this and then the mean, right? So by age category, we see that now adult survived in 39% of the case, child 58%, senior only 9%, and teenager 47.7%, okay? And then we can duplicate that. Maybe we want to do that as by sex, okay? So we see that there is a definite bias there where female survived more than men. And then by passenger class, we group by, and then we see that here, we have again a bias by class where it seems that passenger in the first class survived with a higher frequency than passenger in the third class. Right. Okay, so that was it. Are there any questions uh, there on, on this group by operation? Everything good, everything clear? Okay. So if there are no further questions, then and we have seen how to do the group by and it lets us compute tons of stuff, all right? Now we are going to see together how to do um, this, but visually. And for this, we can use the hue argument of Seaborn. So a lot of Seaborn plotting function have this hue argument, okay? And it's always used to kind of do sort of like a group by, but visually. Well, basically, you want to have one line per category. For example, on the, uh, oh, let me make that slightly smaller. On the, with the this plot, okay, with a kind of KDE, uh, I just have on X is the H, okay? The data comes from the data frame and the hue is the sex. Okay, and automatically then it splits the line by uh, by sex, okay, and creates this little uh, legend for me. This is all automated, all right? And I can do that with most of, you know, the existing uh, Seaborn functions, right? So for example, uh, here I think is where I put a little digression about the colors. So the, de the default colors are quite, nice. Uh, usually when I just do stuff, not well, just data exploration, I don't change them. But when I want to create some plot for a paper, then of course, I definitely change them and have something custom. So here, I just want to spend a little bit of time on four different ways of specifying the colors. The first is to use the default palette of Seaborn. The second is to change the palette of Seaborn. If you go Online, you will see plant that it, um, sorry, that uh, Seaborn has a number of predefined palettes which you can cycle through and test. Okay. Then, third one is that you can manually set the colors, for example, either with the names as I've shown you, like teal, dark orange, and so on and so forth, or with X values. Okay. So that's red, green, and blue in hexadecimal. And you can find plenty of guides online on where to go to go from this code to the color and conversely. Or you can use a named uh, colors. So I've shown you a few. I show you also here a, an example with the XKCD palette. So you can go to this little uh, uh, link there to see where these colors come from and so on. And uh, so basically you can have this little, like this is the same plot I've just changed the colors and you do that with the palette argument, okay? So the palette argument, you give a number of colors and then it will know like, okay, I have two categories and you've given me two colors, so it works. And I will map the first uh, the first category to the first color and so on and so forth. So if you have too many colors, it's fine. But if you don't have enough color, then uh, I think what it does is it, it cycles through that, All right? So there you go, that's how you can kind of play around and change the colors with uh, with Seaborn, use the palette argument. You have here some links if you want to go further, of course. And so that's our basic, let's say, visual group by. Sometimes it's not necessarily enough and we have plenty of other 
plots that we want to do with that. And so for this, just change that one, we have a, another figure level function. So instead of this plot, which is to show one distribution, we can use cat plot, which is made to show the distribution of a variable according to different categories. And so cat plot, you give as x, you know, one numerical uh, column and as y, one categorical column. Or you can do the converse and then you will get it all arranged horizontally uh, instead of uh, instead of vertically. So yeah. Then you can also define, if you don't want to switch the X and Y, you can also define the orientation of it. And then you specify where the data comes from. And then you have these two arguments there. Height, we have seen already together. This determines how high the, um, the plot should be. And aspect is the width to height ratio. Okay, so if it's higher, then the figure is wider. And if it's lower, then the figure is narrower. All right. So let's get that. So that's our basic cat plot. You can see that it just shows little clouds of points there. And that lets us see some of the data that we had seen before. So in one plot, we can represent now the fare for all three classes. Okay. Much simpler than what we had done in this exercise there. All right. So we have that. And then as I for instance, you can change the aspect. So aspect makes it now aspect one means it's as high as high as as it is wide. So you have now something that is a bit narrower. Now there personally I prefer it a little bit like that. And as I told you, maybe I can remove the orient there. And you can switch the X and Y. Also, you don't have to have your categorical on the Y. You can also have it on the X. So see now, passenger class is on the X. And cat plot will understand as long as there is one categorical and one numerical, it will understand what is what and adapt the plot depending on what you want to show. All right, so far so good. Yes. All right, so now a little bit like this plot has several kinds, which could be histogram and density line and cumulative density line. Cat plot has different kinds as well, all right? And the main ones are shown there. So you've got strip, the default. So that's these little clouds of points there. And then you have many which are quite useful in particular. The one which are used the most, I think, is box to create box plots and violin to create violin plots. And also you have different kinds. For instance, bar is the bar plot. And then you have swarm, which is clouds of points. It takes a while to compute, but they are organized in a certain way. It takes, as I said, it takes a while to compute. So that's why I don't do it there because there is many, many, many points to show. But when you only have a couple of hundreds points, then it's kind of doable to use it. And it looks somewhat nice. Boxon is some intermediary. So that's, this is Boxon. And it's an intermediary, as you can see, between a box plot, as is shown here, and a violin plot, as is shown there. All right. And then last but not least, there is points, which is shown there. And it's a little bit like an alternative to the bar plot. Okay, but it's just that there is a line that is drawn between the between the between the height of the bar and and that's it. Right. It's just another way to visualize something. It's yeah, it's not very useful, but in some cases it's visually quite pleasant. Right. Mm, there, so you you can see all three. You can see that there for this peculiar sort of aspect, I made you see that I made it very very narrow. So for instance, you can see that here visually, the box plot are informative, but the violin plot are maybe too much squished. I would need more vertical space. The bar plot, you can see something as well. They work well with this limited space. The boxen are also quite informative, and this as well. But then is also again there maybe the vertical space is not big enough for us to really show something. So you see here that you have many, many options. 
And then you have to think a little bit about what sort of plot will work well, depending on the sort of visual space that you have at your disposal to show whatever it is you want to show on your data. So something also to keep in mind whenever you create visual representations. It's not about purely the function that you use, but also about how you organize the information in space. All right. So here you have some information uh, about some of the details there. And of course, then once you are there, you, so you'd specify one numerical column and one categorical column, but sometimes you can also represent two categorical columns there by adding on top of that the hue parameter. And so then you will create something a little bit like that. So there, what I do is that my X is the fair. Here you see the passenger class, which is my main categorical column. And then the hue is set as the sex. And so then suddenly it takes the control of the color there and splits each box plot into two box plots. So that I have for each class, the distribution for each sex. All right, and I can see that, for instance, female have paid, seem to have paid more in the first, um, in the first fair on average than male, uh, but this difference is maybe uh, not exactly the same or slightly slightly different for the other passenger class. Okay, so this is the sort of visualization that we can get fairly easily by tweaking exactly which category we sh 